Hello, brothers and sisters. Doc Knot here. I decided I needed to make some new chemistry videos. It's been a long time. So I'm planning on doing two videos a week or more when I have time. If what I do brings you value, please let me know by subscribing and leaving a comment. Let me know what you want me to cover next and I'll put it together. Today I'm starting with something I'm teaching in my introductory chemistry class that starts Monday. We'll be talking about the scientific method and explain the differences between some terms that give people some problems. And we'll also get into a couple of uh, problems based on these concepts. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the scientific method is used to explore the natural universe and expand on a body of knowledge to find out how everything ticks and, and why. It basically has four parts, uh, observation, hypothesis, experimentation, and theory. But the experimentation part never ends because you can never prove something's true. You can only disprove something. So observation comes in two flavors, qualitative observations and quantitative observations. Qualitative observations tell you about the quality of a thing, the color, the smell, the shape, things like that. Quantitative observations are measured and involve a number. A natural law is an observation, but it's an observation that applies to uh, universally, right? While a typical observation is specific to one particular instance, right? So a pond is green is an observation, just a typical observation, because not all ponds are green. Uh, water flows downhill is a law because water always flows downhill. It never flows uphill, right? So... Uh, in TV, when a detective says, I have a theory, he's lying to you. He has a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an explanation of why something happened uh, with little or no experimentation to back it up. I think the pond is green uh, there uh, because I think there's algae in it, right? You can test that. So that's a hypothesis, right? If so, of course, experiment tests the hypotheses and measures one variable at a time. And... Um, Uh, I would test the water to see if there's algae in it, then test other green water to see if uh, it has algae in it, and then see if we can find uh, clear water that has algae in it, et cetera. If your experiment does not back up your hypotheses, you can try a different experiment, but eventually you'll have to refine or change your hypotheses once it's been shown to be false. After you've tested it thoroughly, it's called a model. Okay, or eventually a theory. Now you can use a model to make predictions. Um, if the predictions work out, then uh, then uh, this gives evidence, stronger evidence that your model is true. If it doesn't back up your model, you may need to refine your model just like you did with your hypotheses. A model that has a substantial amount of evidence may eventually be accepted as a theory, but no matter how much evidence there is, nothing is proven in science. However, a theory is about as close as you can get. A lot of people confuse the terms hypothesis, theory, and law. Let's get them straight right now. Okay, so an observation and a law describe what happens while uh, a hypothesis and a theory describe why or how it happens. An observation and hypotheses are applied to a small set of events, while a law and theory apply to a large set of events. Okay, so basically, what I'm saying here is that a the law and the theory are related in that they um, relate to a huge number of events. But some people think that a theory becomes a law, and that's just not true. A theory cannot become a law because a law is actually an observation, just saying what happens, whereas a theory explains why that happens, right? Um, an observation and a hypothesis are similar in that they have, that they are about a small number of events, but they're completely different. An observation just tells you what you just saw, and a hypothesis explains why you, that you think that that happened, okay? So an observation and a law are really very much the same thing. And they tell you what happens. Um, and a hypothesis and a theory are basically the same thing. They tell you why it happens. But a theory is is well established and a hypothesis is just what you, you're coming up with at the, uh, in the beginning, okay? So... Um, Let's uh, try a problem here. Classify each, each statement as a law, a theory, an experiment, a hypothesis, 
a qualitative observ observation or a quantitative observation, and then briefly explain the reason for each classification. Measured amounts of an acid were added to a Rolaids tablet to see whether it really consumes 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid. This is an experiment um, as it's testing the hypotheses that the tablet will absorb 47 times the acid. The amount of acid is measured and is the dependent variable, while the amount of acid needed will depend on the mass of the tablet. The mass of the tablet would be the independent variable. Okay, the next question. Heat always flows from a hot object to cooler ones, not in the opposite direction. The key here is the word always, okay? The word always is, is our key. And so this is a law because it is a statement that describes what happens when hot thing is placed next to a cold thing. The heat leaves the hot thing and warms up the cold thing. Heat always flows this way. So it is a law rather than an observation. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to give you the answer already. All right. Um, as supported by valid experiments, the universe was formed by a massive explosion that propelled matter into a vacuum. So this is a theory because it explains why or rather how the universe was formed and has been backed up by huge amounts of evidence, right? So it, it tells us right here in the beginning as supported by valid experiments. Therefore, we're talking a the theory rather than a hypothesis. So pressure inside the red mylar balloon will increase when the temperature is increased because the particles will move faster. So this is a hypothesis because it explains why the pressure builds up. The statement does not state this has been backed up with any evidence. Therefore, it's a hypothesis, not a theory. Limestone is a relatively insoluble in water, but dissolves readily in dilute acid with the evolution of gas. Okay, so this is going to be a qualitative observation. Um, this observation, since it describes what happens, but there is no measurement and no numbers uh, involved, so it's a qualitative observation. Okay, and the last one, silver carbonate uh, solid melted at 423 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is an obs whoops, this is an observation. Um, and it's a quantitative observation because they gave us a measurement of 423 degrees. So it's a, a qualitative, qu sorry, quantitative observation. All right. Oh, well, whatever. A student added 100 mils of water to a styrofoam cup. The student measured the temperature of the water, then added five grams of solid magnesium sulfate and recorded the temperature of the solution. The student continued to increase the mass of the magnesium sulfate added to the water in increments of five grams and recorded the temperature of the solution after each addition of solid. So first, identify the independent variable. The mass of the solid added is the independent variable. An independent variable is the variable you manipulate or vary in the experiment stud or experimental study to explore its effects on the dependent variable. Here, we're varying the amount of solid to see how the temperature changes. So the solid is the independent variable. Identify the dependent variable. The temperature, um, oops, there we go. The temperature, um, because it's dependent on how much mass we added, the, the, the dependent variable is what you measure in the experiment and is affected during the experiment. The dependent variable responds to the independent variable. It's, uh, it's called the dependent because it depends on the independent variable. So this is the temperature, right? Identify the controlled variables. Controlled variables, um, is the variable that, or an element, which is held constant throughout the experiment in order to uh, in order to assess the relationship between the dependent and the independent variables. So in this case, that's going to be the volume of the water um, and the identity of the solid. All right. So the last one is uh, complete. Uh, write a complete hypothesis for the experiment. The temperature of the solution increases as the mass of the solid increases because when more solid is added, then more heat is given off, making the temperature increase. All right. I mean, there'd be a lot of different answers that you, you could uh, write for uh, a hypothesis for this, but that's just one example. All right. So that's the end there. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. And so hopefully, um, you got something out of this? If you did, please let me know, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.